Industrial Training University's Arc Flash Engineering Group is dedicated to helping you understand and comply with the Department of Labor's OSHA guidelines. Navigating the road to OSHA compliance can be confusing and difficult. At AFE, our mission is to provide practical, no-frills advice and service to help you down the road to OSHA compliance. This video is designed to help you understand the rules and regulations regarding OSHA arc flash labeling and conducting an arc flash analysis in your facility. We'll start by answering a few common questions. Are you required to have arc flash labels at all? If so, what electrical panels am I required to label? And what are the rules and regulations you need to follow? If you own or are responsible for any non-dwelling facility, have employees, and operate in any state in the USA, then you are required to conduct an arc flash analysis and your electrical panels must have the OSHA approved arc flash warning label. First, let's look at a few common sense issues. Take a look at what type of personal protection equipment, or PPE, that your service or maintenance workers use when working around electrical equipment. Do they use approved rubber gloves, fire retardant clothing, eye or face protection? Do you have any idea of the dangerous levels of current in each panel that your workers maintain? Let's take a look. This worker is in grave danger. While it may not look like it, that electrical panel has over 50,000 amps of current potential should an accidental short occur. An arc flash survey provided that information and the arc flash warning label informed the worker of what type of personal protection equipment to use and wear. The National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health indicates that each day three to four people are killed from an electrical related work injury in America. In a typical arc flash temperatures can reach as high as 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit and the arc blast itself can produce up to 2100 pounds per square inch of pressure. It's easy to see why OSHA is requiring more stringent regulations. Every state in the U.S. uses the National Fire Protection Association's publication known as the NEC or the National Electrical Code. This code is technically known as NFPA 70. At the request of OSHA, the NFPA published a new standard for electrical safety in the workplace known as NFPA 70E. The NFPA 70E section 113.3 says this, a flash analysis shall be done in order to protect personnel from the possibility of being injured by an arc flash. The analysis shall determine the flash protection boundary and the personal protective equipment that people within the flash protection boundary shall use. Section 400.11 says that all switchboards, panel boards, industrial control panels, and motor control centers that are in other than dwelling occupancies and are likely to require examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance while energized shall be field marked to warn qualified persons of potential arc flash hazards. The marking shall be located as to clearly be visible to qualified persons before examination, adjustment, servicing, or maintenance of the equipment. Section 130.7E says that safety signs that meet the ANSI Z535 sign standard shall be used to warn employees about electrical hazards that might endanger them. That label looks like this. The ANSI Z535 sign standard calls this type of label obsolete. To perform an arc flash analysis, you will need to obtain the amount of available short circuit current that is being supplied to your facility. Do this by getting the KVA rating and impedance of the transformers feeding your facility. Using this information, you will calculate the amount of short circuit current available to your facility. Then you'll need to obtain the feeder type 
size, and length between the transformer and the main switch gear. Keep in mind that you will need to protect yourself from an arc flash while gathering this information. This data will allow you to establish the flash protection boundary in inches, the flash hazard category, the minimum arc rating of your PPE and what PPE to wear, along with the limited, restricted, and prohibited approach boundaries. OSHA suggests that this information be present on the required arc flash warning label. The complete analysis will include your entire electrical system, and nearly every electrical panel must be labeled. Operating a company without complying with these regulations is taking a huge gamble. The federal government allows OSHA to impose several penalties. If an employer is convicted of willful violation of a standard that results in the death of an employee, the offense is punishable by imprisonment of up to six months and a fine of up to $500,000 for a corporation. Take a trip to the OSHA website. There you'll see several companies just like yours who after an unforeseen accident have been fined staggering amounts. Don't get caught without being in compliance with these government regulations. Whether your facility is a commercial building, an office, a public building, new construction, old construction, industrial or institutional, every non-dwelling facilities must comply with these federal regulations. Industrial Training University's Arc Flash Engineering Group is devoted to supplying you with only the basic, practical, OSHA-required Arc Flash analysis. By offering only the required analysis and labeling, our project cost is lowered by almost 40%, passing that savings on to you, the customer. To find out more about our award-winning electrical training or to speak with an engineer about our Arc Flash surveys and analysis, call us today or log on to arcflashengineering.com for more information.